We got patch one, we got patch two, we got patch three. We don't really know what's going on with NBA 2K21 and the patch notes aren't clarifying anything, but there's a lot that's supposed to be changing with the game. And of course the next gen console pre-orders just launched. So everybody's getting gassed about next gen 2K21. A lot going on in the atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all new to the channel and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And I'm trying to get to two mil by the end of the year, which is not really that possible. But you know what I'm saying? We shoot for the moon and the stars here on this channel. So subscribe. All right, so about a week ago, we obviously all downloaded Patch 2. Now, when we hopped on the game, though, there wasn't much different. Uh, we heard the rumors about the increased ankle breakers, but no playmakers have experienced that. And the patch notes themselves were incredibly vague. Uh, they go as follows. Hank the Tank put out a tweet saying, Dang, 2K really went into detail with these patch notes, man. Uh, obviously using a fierce amount of sarcasm here. And he linked to the patch notes that described fixed various crashing issues, added stability and performance improvements, gameplay optimizations, made some gameplay adjustments, fixed stuttering and lag issues, other minor fixes. Like, they couldn't have been more vague if they tried. To be more vague, they would, the whole patch note would have just had to have said more and better. Because we don't actually know any of the gameplay optimizations, adjustments, whether or what, to what degree the stuttering was fixed, etc, etc. Because when I hopped on the game, man, there was more latency. Personally, me, I haven't been experiencing game crashes. I think it happened to me one time at launch, and that's been it. So I can't speak from that sense. I'm on the PS4, and I've only experienced it one time. The one thing I did experience, though, and this happened a couple days ago while I was playing pro -Am, is they finally added floaters back into the game. Yeah, in previous years, if you just click down on the right stick away from the basket on the right stick, you would do a floater. Before patch two, there was no floaters in the game. You could not get one, but they just recently added it into the game instead of doing a pull-up jump shot. So that's what patch two did for me, in my experience. There was a lot of people worried that shooting with the stick was very overpowered, like how it was in the first month of 2K17. A lot of complaints about that. There was some rumors and personally me, I haven't shot with the stick to verify, but the word around the street is shooting with the stick has been nerfed. Now, in my experience, whites is still dropping. You hop on the game, man, you see an obnoxious amount of all white releases hitting. No matter which camp you're on, whether or not you think they should buff shooting or nerf shooting, you're not happy with what the state of the current game is right now. It's so interesting because it seems like the sentiment around NBA 2K21 current gen right now is that the game has the potential to just be solid. But there's so many small things that's getting in the way of people's experience. One of the main issues people have been having and complaining about, especially those who play on the twos, is that it's difficult to get games. This year they placed the twos deep very far away from the rest of the park. So not a lot of people are perusing in that area. It's harder to get games there. But on top of that, you probably experienced this yourself. You're on the court, you just want a game and you, people will hop off and check your record and they do all kind of psychoanalysis before they hop on and play you. There's a lot of people furious it takes them an hour just to get two games in on the park. Personally, me, I haven't been playing the park. It's so incredibly laggy. The experience is ruthlessly furious to engage in. So what am I, what, what, what business do I have put myself through that. I've dead ass been on 3v3 Prime and a little bit of 5v5 Prime. That's it. And I've genuinely been having fun. Aside from the latency issues, you know what I'm saying? It's been a good experience for me. It's to the point where there's actually a decent amount of people in the park community. It's the first time I've seen this happen in a while because it's something that I've been asking for for a while, but the park guys have been vehemently opposed to it is they've been asking for matchmaking. 2K's try things, right? Listen, we've been asking 2K to try things. They say, remove the record so people stop running when they see your record, but now they just pull out their phone and check your record. The pace of the games is awfully slow. How do you solve it? Well, Ruffles is already the blueprint. Just match make people. That way they can't leave. Or if they do leave, they take the L. Yo, know, when I play ranked games, I was just playing Valorant last night for the first time in a while. They don't show me the rank of the other team until we're already in the game. And then if I leave while we're in the game, I lose a ton of rank. So you can't just see a good rank and run. That's the problem 2K's having right now. People are nervous to play games because they see a good rank and run. That's not a fun experience. You're sitting there waiting for 20 minutes in between games. That's not enjoyable. 2K, you have to address it on the next patch. It should have been addressed a long time ago, years ago. But it's an issue that's continued to balloon. And if some of you guys have been in the community since 2K15, 2K16, you remember, there was a time where people just played. They weren't nervous about their win-loss. They weren't trying to get a great field goal percentage. They weren't obsessed about their stats. There was a time where people just hopped on and they played 2K. Back in the 14, 15 days, I wasn't great at 2K. I'd hop on, 
nervous that the playmaker, seven foot playmaker, demigods was gonna snatch the soul out of me, man. So, hey, uh, for what it's worth, you can even go back to some of my 2K16 videos. You'll see an entirely different type of community. One that just hopped in and played games. Win or lose, you just trying to enjoy the experience. They weren't so fucking hell bent on trying to play garbage players every game just so they could feel good about themselves. Uh, Mike Wang put out a note though, and he said this. With patch 1.02, target window for shot aiming depends on how quickly you move the right stick to start a shot. Slow flick equals left, fast flick equals right. So it's under your control now. You can also use shot aiming with the meter off for a small boost. Now, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I, maybe I just don't understand. I have to visually see something because I don't know what the f Mike just said right now. Swante, it was a top response uh, and he said, man, what does that last sentence even mean? I'm so confused. Man, I just hope the shot stick doesn't break the game. Yeah, cause there is a reality where the shot stick system that they added this year makes perfect sense. And it makes the game more fun to play and it even adds a skills gap to the game. But for it to get there, it has to be balanced. Can't be overpowered and it can't be useless. Gotta be down the middle. He also added though, he said patch 1.02, you can shoot driving floaters. Oh, that's what I was just talking about. If you want the pull-ups you were getting pre-packed, send it to the ladder, blah, 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 blah. You don't want those pull-ups, all right? I'm telling you what you want. You want those floaters. God damn it, man. They just took out a whole thing in the game for like weeks. I was like, yo, how come I can't do a single floater? I was like, maybe I'm just doing it incorrectly, but it turns out it just wasn't even in the game until now. Uh, anyway, the official account put out the notes for the patch that dropped last week. That exists. So Mike Wang began to clarify because for those who don't know, this is how patches usually work. The developers work on a patch. They make sure everything that they want is in the patch and then they send it out to both Sony and Microsoft, right? So PlayStation and Xbox have to approve those patches. Now the process can sometimes take a week, two weeks from what I've heard, all right? From my understanding, it also costs money every time they drop a patch. I don't know what it is, but my understanding is in the tens of thousands. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I heard. So what I think happened is when the game launched, uh, and it should have happened in a launch patch, but it wasn't ready. That's what I think happened. And they just put out patch two. And then they realized like, oh, ankle breakers is not in the game. Let's put out patch three. So in the matter of two weeks, Sony and Microsoft have to approve two different patches for the game. And so what really should have all came together came separately because of the whole approval process when you're dealing with console manufacturers. Mike Wang said this on Twitter. Nerf to fades is not in this patch, will become in the next patch, patch 1.03, which is still in active development. Oh, so they're still working on it. Okay. I, I believe him when he says that. I feel like that'd be a very weird thing to lie about. Ankle breakers should work better today, but the full fix for them will come in patch 1.03. Now I was streaming with G-Man yesterday. And I can tell you right now, he had Playmaker Takeover plenty of times, not one ankle breaker. And this is G-Man we're talking about, one of the best dribblers. So it doesn't exist still in the game. If, 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 if it works better, it doesn't work in the park in the prime, my experience. So there was actually a follow-up. If you guys watched the last couple videos I made, uh, Ronnie2k called out the My League My GM community for capping about the rating. How the story goes is this. My League My GM guys is furious that there's inaccurate tendencies and ratings for players on the official 2K roster. They post about those things online to get them fixed and the 2k team actually fixes them pretty quickly but then ronnie 2k puts out a tweet saying yo y'all capping the stuff there was never anything wrong with the ratings in the first place which is cap it was just changed before ronnie caught on to it uh king of the fourth quarter put out a tweet here saying perfect Ronnie told us we were lying about the ratings, our proof. And it links to this tweet here saying, King of the Fourth Quarter started my career on launch. Here's Kawhi's mid-range for proof on your last vid. And uh, he's showing Kawhi's mid-range right here at an 84. And the complaint people were having was on launch, for some reason Giannis Antetokounmpo had a higher mid-range than Kawhi. Stop and think about that for a moment. Shout out, uh, shout out uh, Giannis though. Shout out MVP, big MVPs, two of them now. Only people that aren't happy for him are LeBron fans. <laughs> Now, I'm not gonna bore you guys with the updates about the PS5 and the Xbox Series X stuff because everybody kind of knows. The pre-orders went live for the PS5 and it's very, very challenging to get. As I tried to warn everybody, if you have a plug, then you're blessed. I personally pre-ordered two. I'm just gonna wait for the first one to get to my house and I'm probably gonna give away the rest of them to people I know. But there was a little bit of drama on Twitter which caught my attention, of course, because Xbox decided to take some shots at PlayStation. For those who paid attention to the way that PlayStation released the launch, it was supposed to come out at midnight across all retailers. But for some reason, about six, seven hours before it was supposed to release, Walmart, Target, GameStop, Best Buy, all, all accidentally leaked it on their website, all right? So if you were paying close attention and you happened to get a link 
think because it was gone within two minutes, then you pre-ordered yourself a PS5. People were frustrated with the whole process because of course they're excited to get the new consoles, but is that the way to do it? Everybody was expecting to, for it to happen at midnight. And I think the only company, the only big company that waited till midnight was Amazon. Amazon's pre-orders went live around like 1 a.m. Because GameStop, Target, Walmart, and all of them leaked it early. I got one from Best Buy and I got one from Target. So Xbox, of course, is paying attention. Uh-huh. They put out this tweet saying, pre-order September 22nd, worldwide launch in 36 countries, November 10th. Hype, 9,000 plus. Don't worry, we'll let you know the exact time pre-orders start for you soon. <laughs> Me personally, I'm a PC gamer, so I'm not with all the console war talk, but listen, for the time being, I'm very comfortable and happy with both Xbox and PlayStation taking shots at one another. Uh, PlayStation, I fully expect you to take some shots back. Mm -hmm. But for right now, PlayStation's kind of kept it quiet. It's been very hectic since the pre-orders launched. So as soon as the pre-orders launched, though, there was some talk about next-gen NBA 2K21. Uh, Dignify put out a tweet saying this. Can 2K confirm that 2K releases when the next-gen consoles drops? Ronnie 2K actually responded to that tweet saying, we confirmed that back when Xeon trailer released and we have often since then. So we could 100% expect NBA 2K to be a launch title for both PS5 and Xbox Series X. I'm not gonna lie, I keep forgetting the name of that new Xbox. I'm just gonna call it the Xbox, guys, from this point forward. Somebody responded saying, but Ronnie, NBA draft got postponed till 18 of November. Y'all gonna launch the game with generic rookies like current gen? He responded saying, we would launch the game with the rosters as they stood at the time like that every year. Assume once we get draft info, we would update them. We don't really have a choice. They're not knowing who's going where, and they're not a free agent, ha. Huh. Yeah, because they can't just not drop their entire game waiting on a draft class. What if they have to delay it again? 2K just never releases? That'd be crazy. Yeah, they could always update it at a future date regardless. That's true. Grinding asked Ronnie, will the servers be up? With a uh, blushing face. <sighs> Something you want to tell us, Grinding? We will announce the exact release date for both consoles when we announce them, but if it's a launch title, as we have said many times. But we definitely aren't launching a game without the servers on. 98% of our game is online. Because the new Xbox releases two days before the new PlayStation. So I'm curious to see if 2K is just gonna drop it day one on the Xbox, so whoever ends up getting the Xbox gets the game two days early. That'd be a pretty big advantage in my opinion. Kenny, king of the fourth quarter, quote tweeted Ronnie's tweet saying, y'all, we make up 2% of the game. Yo, they very, 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 very rarely give us like numbers about like which game mode is the biggest, which game mode they make the most money from, etc., etc. Back in 2K16 was the last time we heard that Park was their biggest game mode. We could very well, for, we don't know. My team could now be their biggest game mode. We literally do not know. So when, when I do hear numbers like this, I get pretty fascinated because they kind of keep the stuff in the tuck and they very rarely say stuff about it. But it is kind of wild that that means that my league, my GM, and the offline play now guys only make up two percent of the game and, and when he says the game i i think he really means revenue because the money you're making off of them because i know there's more than two percent of people that just hop on 2k and play offline play now with their friends obviously which i mean it makes sense listen they cut all kind of corners on my gm my league if it's a game mode that they're making no money off of then they're not going to be incentivized to try to include things in the game mode should it be that way no but is it that way Yes. I remember they tried to force microtransactions my GM my league. And I don't know if it's like that anymore, but back when I played it OD in like 2K16, you could buy levels. Like there was 99 levels to my GM and you could just buy yours with VC if you wanted to. You didn't even have to play the game to be level 99 because they were just like, how do we make money off this offline game mode? Oh, I know. And that's what they thought of. NBA 2K Lab decided to enlighten us next up because they've been doing millions and millions and millions and millions of tests to try and, I guess, break down the game for us so we know what to expect when we hop on. They gave us this chart saying, from our most recent YouTube video, the chart is showing 200 shots taken at every millisecond inside the green window for base three at a 90 rating. As you can see, even if you land in the green window, it's not guaranteed to be a green or even a mate. And to me, this is a problem. I understand giving like sharpshooters an advantage when it comes to shooting, slashes an advantage when it comes to driving. It, it gives the game a little bit more dynamic RPG feel to it. It gives you a reason to want to grind your player. It makes the game more grindy and okay, okay, I get it. But if someone is doing something perfectly, if I'm playing defense perfectly, I need to be rewarded. If someone shoots the ball perfectly, they need to be rewarded. In the second that gets thrown out the window so does the skills gap because now you're adding random into the game a lot of rng so this is kind of concerning to me personally now i'll say this the pure sharpshooter i'm playing with when i release it properly with my jump shot by the way i dropped the jump shot video so stop asking me guys i leave it linked up above all right i'm gonna put it on end screen 
Stop asking me. I'm not gonna answer the question 20 million times. I literally have a video about the jump shot that I use. When I use my jump shot, man, and I'm releasing the ball perfectly, in my opinion, I don't miss. But here with this jump shot, they were using base three. So there might be a difference there. NBA 2K Lab also verified, and I talked about this on the last video, that if you have a three point rating under an 80, there's a good chance that it's gonna be very challenging for you to be consistent shooting the basketball because there's gonna be some op some shots you take where there just isn't a realistic green window. As I said in the past, and I'm gonna say again, I genuinely believe what they're doing on current gen is just beta testing for next gen. At least when it comes to the shooting slide. But that's some fascinating information had you not known. They actually did follow up. They said there seems to be an even smaller window inside that green window where your chance of making the shot goes up dramatically. We are working on providing this chart for each top rated jumpers on the premium jumper table. This chart takes about 16 hours to generate. Jesus. Which would be very fascinating by the way, which means there's a green window and there's a green green window. <laughs> That would be a quite uh, the change because we haven't had that happen in previous 2Ks. And the last thing I'd like to discuss with y'all, man, is the My Team community. Now, admittedly, you know what I'm saying, I don't really be paying too much attention. I kind of just see what happens on Twitter from time to time, and that's about it. But the My Team community went from like excited about NBA 2K21 current gen of all the changes since the trailer release pre-launch to like just furious with what's been going on. And a lot of the changes seem to just be like collateral damage. It, it seems to be like they're trying to do a challenge to unlock a play but they're playing on pro difficulty and the AI are just insufferable to play against. Like how is the pro level AI that good? And keep in mind when you play my team, unlike Park where we could perfect the jump shot, you can have like eight different jump shots on your team that you have to worry about. So I understand why in previous years it was just easier to shoot on my team and it was a lot more random. It felt like there was less skill involved in consistently shooting on my team in my experience. But uh, I, I genuinely fear for the My Team community here. Because while the Park guys have something to look forward to on Next Gen, Mike Wang has said in the past that there's gonna be a different system in Next Gen, which is why your players won't transfer from current to Next Gen. The My Team guys are gonna have their players transfer, which means it's likely gonna be a very similar system, which likely means that they're not gonna have a brand new experience on next gen. Part of the reason I'm so excited for next gen is because I genuinely believe there's gonna be a brand new experience for me to play. One that's very different and much improved from the current gen one we're currently playing. So uh, my team guys, I feel for you, man. Not only do you have to bring out your wallets, uh, you know what I'm saying, every time they drop a card to hopefully just have a chance at getting the card, but it seems even when you have a good team and you just wanna play and enjoy yourself, you're being stuffed by pro level AI regardless how good you are. That's a tough scene, man. I wouldn't be able to do it. Hey, uh, that's it for the video though, man. I'll catch y'all up. Patch three is around the corner. We don't know when it's gonna drop. It could drop today, it could drop in a week. We do not know. A few days ago, again, it said in the tweet, Mike Wang said it's still in development, so it was not thrown out for approval as of the time of that tweet. If you guys are new, man, you haven't already, drop a like. Hey, end screen right here, I'm gonna leave my jump shot video. I'm telling you, it's the most money jump shot in the game. So you won't have to ask nobody else for a jump shot. And subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the AMP channel, second channel, just hit 300K. Subscribe to that link in the description. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.